G'day guys, it is Ben here from Hunt the Night. Now, welcome to the top 10 five things I wish I knew. Beginner's Advanced Guide to Buying a Thermal Scope. <laughs> it took me a while to come up with this title. And the reason, like I stayed away from doing these type of videos, but you know, this kind of clicks into our importance of base magnification series. So it could be the importance of base magnification part three, how to buy a thermal scope, but it sounded much more fun <laughs> having a fun title. Now, what we're going to talk today about is how to select a thermal scope based on the information available, I guess, on huntthenight.com.au. Because we've broken things up into um, big game, small game, and... I don't think we put medium game on, but we'll talk about medium anyway. And about how to select a scope and what all that means. Now, when I talk about this, the we're going to break this into two things. We've got needs and we've got considerations. Now, this is a blank bit of paper. I know this is a bit boring right now. I could draw and doodle, but there's no point. Um, the need is something that's required, okay? So base magnification is a need. Uh, form factor, in terms of what the scope like looks like, is a consideration, okay? There's no point having a form factor of a scope if you can't get the base magnification of the device, you know, in that, in that form factor. Um, field of view is, is a need. Uh, battery type is a consideration. Whether it runs on a proprietary Pulsar or infrared battery you get eight hours out of, or if you want to buy CR123 batteries and swap them out, that's a consideration, okay? So the way I approach it is we work out our needs and then we can narrow the range of products we have and then we can look at the considerations, all right? So how do we do it? Well, I'm going to try and write a little bit of this out. I, I thought about trying to draw, but based on some of my past drawings, oh, well, let's give it a go. So on our website, we will define a big game as, let's say, a deer. A deer's got four legs, a head, <laughs> some ears, okay? This is big. Now, when you're shooting a big animal, you're not asking your scope to do a lot because you've got a lot of heat to work with, okay? The radiation that, 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 that comes off a, a big animal is, is big. So it's a big animal, okay? So when we say medium to long distance, we're talking about 150 to 200. If we're saying um, long distance, oh, I'm going to knock the camera off. We're talking 300 plus, okay? Now... On a deer, 300 plus, you know, it, it's a long shot. And, but that's what we're talking, all right? Now, if we have a look at a pig, oh, this is, uh, <laughs> I can't draw for shit. A pig, right? Medium distance for us, you know, might be 100 to 150 because the animal is smaller, okay? So the heat signature is less, so you're asking your scope to do a bit more. When we get down to a fox, yeah, and seriously, I don't wanna see any comments about my drawing skills. Nice bushy tail on a fox. Um, medium distance is really I'm, you know, our definition of medium distance is 100 to 125 meters, and long distance is 150 meters plus, okay? And I'm going to say effectively, you're topping out with even the best scopes at kind of 250 meters, right? So this is how we define it, because when you're shooting a fox at longer distance, you're asking your scope to do a lot, because it's a small heat signature, it's at ground level, so in any type of grass, you're not getting a clean signature, heat signature as it is. So for us, you know, this is small and this is actually one of the hardest things um, it is to, to shoot. So the, if this is our need in terms of how to shoot this, where does our magnification sit within that, okay? So for me, we like to shoot without, you know, lots of digital zoom, but also want to require a wide field of view. Now I'm going to add something in here. 
especially for these ones. Short distance for deer and short distance for pigs. Because I know a lot of people, including myself, I shoot deer at this kind of distance and sometimes at this distance. Um, pigs, you know, we shoot often at this distance and sometimes at this kind of distance, okay? I'm going to leave the short distance out for foxes because I think realistically 100 metres is probably the average um, shooting distance for a fox anyway. So, for me, I'm trying to pair magnification up with, with these types of things. And this is how I approach it. Now, this is different for everyone, okay? Short distance on, on deer, I'm going to say I'm looking around that 2 to 2.5 magnification, 3 um, to uh, 4 magnification, and 4 plus. Okay? That's, that's the magnification range that I'm looking at in these scopes. And that translates the same... Um, the same for pigs, okay? Uh, three to four magnification and four plus. What I would say, if you're shooting on mobs of pigs and 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 by shooting on mobs and shooting with, with semi-automatics, if you're a professional shooter as well, so you're getting multiple shots off of pigs when, they, when they're mobs, you might bring this also back to two to 2.5, so you've got a nice wide field of view, um, and then, you know, to adjust within that range. For foxes, for me, this is 3.5 minimum, and this is 4 plus, okay? So now that we've determined our needs, we can take this information and look at the range of scopes that fall into this. You notice how I've not once mentioned which sensor size, because sensor size is a consideration. Um, dictated by what it is we're shooting and how far we're shooting it. So, that is our secret source to buying the perfect thermal scope. I don't think there's much else I can add. There's probably going to be a few comments about this and a few questions. I'm happy to delve into a little bit further, but this is what I'm thinking of off the top of my head and a lot of my videos are kind of done off the top of my head. So, there it is, guys. That is the top... 10 five things i wish i knew advanced beginner's guide to buying a thermal scope now this is applicable to information at huntthenight.com.au because this is how we rate our devices uh, and that is the type of game we're talking about hope this helps guys any questions shoot me an email give me a call message me on facebook whatever you need to do but don't forget to tag a vegan